I've arrived at the seal. Free park. One good thing about doing things on a Sunday, it's less busy on the traffic. Well, because this is a complicated place, traffic-wise. Um, and it's quieter. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the parking's free. Well, I'm just going to put some decent walking shoes on and then I'm off to find the church and take photos. This is Seal in Kent where Ollie's ancestors come from and that's what I'm doing here. <coughs> right then, I've arrived at Seal, as I said earlier, and I've got to the church. After having to visit a pub to use the local area toilets. Right, it's the um, Church of England, Diocese of Rochester. Welcome to the parish church of St. Peter and St. Paul, Seal. Yeah, there's one old pub. It might be called the King's Head or something like that. That's very old. It was an old coach house. And that's been, not demolished, but it's going to be converted into residential accommodation I think an old gentleman was telling me there's another co old coach house I can't remember what it's called now but I went in there to use the ladies then I went down a place called Pudding Lane to another pub called the Five Bells and now I'm in the churchyard looking for Farrants and other people I should have looked really before I came shouldn't I because I've got my memory so bad. Farron is one of the names, but it might stick out if I... if I recognise it, if I see one, it might... I mean, it might, I mean I've got all the information in the car, but I haven't brought it with me. Normally I check, I bring the family tree with me. Because they're associated names. Right, I'm just going in the church at Seal. I suppose they've had all their services this morning. So it's unlocked. Oh, yeah. Where did you put that? I wonder which lights are which. relatives. I've got to go back to the car because I, I've forgotten some of the surnames. I'm going to bring the car up here. Um, that's what I'm going to do. That's what this costs. yet because um, I can't remember all the names to tell you the truth and without the names I got Farrant that's the only name I can remember I can't remember the rest I brought the family tree with me Nice 
my stained glass windows. talking and mumbling. It's a lot of gaps. This is me leaving the table. I've got to turn it off for a minute. Uh, yeah, the Kentish Yeoman, that's the name of the other pub in the village. That used to be a coach house. The Kentish Yeoman. The little local man pointed out to me it was a one-way system, apart from the main vein of the village. So that's why it pays to walk around, because I've actually found a quick way round back to the church, other than getting myself lost by going up a, ro a, ro a wrong way street. Um, going up a one-way one street, I found uh, like a back way past behind some houses. Anyway, I've just worked it out why someone always seems to turn up when I'm doing my... There's, they've got a, 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 some sort of system in place in the churches because to stop people pinching the candles and the lead off the roofs. Just have a look round a minute. Well, they've got a large cricket field here. Probably football as well in the... They've got a recreation hall pavilion. Equivalent to a town hall, I suppose. Little playground. Um, Just having a look around the recreational hall for a minute. This is all part of what you do when you're out doing family tree. You have to examine the places where people lived, even though this was never here. A hundred years ago, fifty years ago, twenty years ago, it's brand new. anyone's even moved in or if they've just done it up. It's doing it up I think. They got cameras everywhere here. Look. They're so paranoid these um, middle class people that you're gonna nick their stuff. Everything's um just wet we're just gonna wave to the camera. Hi Right, I've gone I'm back to the church now.
Well, they've got some quite old stones here. Like bodies wrapped up in, in the death robes. Which shows that they're quite old usually. Yeah, I'm having a, a little look round. The problem is I didn't bring enough generations with me. The name Newman sounds familiar, but then that could be to do with um, somebody else, a different tree. I'll just take a picture anyway. I'm taking a picture of a member of Francis Newman, who died 1807, aged 51. Then next to that, there's a John Newman and a Sarah Newman, died in the early 1800s. There's some very old graves in here. There's one here. So it's Shoebridge is the name. And it's somebody who died, William Shoebridge, who died September the eighth, seventeen it could be eighty seven, age forty eight. Yeah, there's a few Shoebridges here. There's a whole row of Shoebridges. There's one um Mrs. Anne Shoebridge, daughter of the late William and Anne Shoebridge of this parish, who suddenly departed this life in 1818, aged 62. This William, um, Jane, daughter of William and Anne Shoebridge, she died in 1800, aged 32. So I'm just doing a few because it seems to be quite an. There's what's the other one? Holmden. Holmden. Some very big old graves here. So I might take a picture of a group of those. Because no doubt the Ferrants would have known them. Of course when I'm doing the tree in the beginning, it's very fresh in my mind. Masters is another name that keeps cropping up a lot. Going off for a minute. Struck gold. Found a Bashford. In loving memory of Edward Bashford, who died July the 8th, 1886, in his 81st year. And Margaret Bashford, who died October 15th, 1886, in her 81st year. He died in... July, and she died in the 88, she died two years later in the October. What could be a connection? The name Miles rings a bell, so I'm going to take a picture of this grave of Thomas Miles, who died 1888, he's 55. I don't expect there's any link, but I keep finding shepherds and not far away cells, but of course this is in a different part. Right, just turning over a minute to the other side. There we go. There's a great big monument in this graveyard to Charles Henry Ma Mills, first Baron Hillingdon, born 26 of April 1850, died April the 3rd, 1898. Beyond these voices, there is peace. Also to Lou. Louisa Isabella, his wife, um, and daughter of the third Earl of Harewood. And then you've got Patrick Charles Hillingdon, 1906 and 1982, Herbert Alexander Lawrence, fourth son of the first Baron Lawrence of Punjab and Gratley, 1861 to 1943, military family, then Colonel something, Honour, Cremont Mills, third son of the first Lord Hillingdon, beloved husband of Florence Mills, 
Well, so Florence's wife, she died in uh, uh, 1959-89. So that's a big monument to them. I'll take a picture of the ordinary camera. I've got a feeling that is a relative of Ollie's, so it's, this is never a waste of time coming to these graveyards. This is um, Seal Graveyard in Kent, where I am, near Seven Oaks, and I've, I'm looking for Bashfords and Farrants because I've I'm not sure if I've brought any more of the tree with me to look for older names and things aren't really ringing bells but here we've got Edward Bashford I said this earlier um, and Margaret Bashford I'm just trying to point out I, mean, she, I can't remember her name <sighs> I really can't remember what her other name was now which is silly isn't it really <laughs> I haven't brought all that information but anyway in front of them. Yeah, her maiden name was Hook. You've got this giant Celtic cross. And it's for Neville Forbes. Uh, the only son of uh, of Godden Green. Who died in 1883. Um, or was he born at... No, born 1883. Died at Oxford. 9th of February 1929. There's a whole family in here, it's quite a big one um, of people that are Forbes. I think they're Forbes. And Ashby's. Forbes and Ashby's. Just going to take a picture of it with the Bashford grave behind. You only got to find one to make the visit worthwhile, and that could be one of her great great grandparents. So n none of it's ever wasted. But like I said, I, I'm surprised I didn't bring the whole tree. It might be in another book, which makes it very difficult for the rest of. Because I thought I would have had the whole of that tree. I really did. I can't believe that I haven't done Richard Farrant and had him. I must have it somewhere because I was going to do him so I could go back. It does annoy me when I make these mistakes. It could be in the car still. I should be going back in a minute to inquire. I just want to finish off scanning just in case I come across something. Then I'm off to a place called Kemsing. I mean, it, it is really remarkable, the scenery. This churchyard is set on a hill overlooking a beautiful rural community. I mean, what spoils it? You can hear a main road. And it could be that the, the church, I can see another church here across the valley there with a pointed tower. That could be one I end up on in a minute. Kemsing. You always get interesting names in graveyards, isn't it? Like death. You got one here, William Slaughter. You know, I mean, is it, is it Goose Lock? Goose Neck was another one I came across once. Yeah, there's lots of old graves here. Of course, there are a lot of them are colour placard, but there's lots of old, really, really old graves here haven't been and what amazes me as well is some um, in some graveyards that half of these wouldn't be allowed they wouldn't be allowed half of them because they're leaning over such a lot they'd be pulled down in in western supermare <laughs> Right, well, we found one that was visible. Anyway, go back to the car.
Yeah, I found the relevant bit of tree. We got Farrant. Well, Richard, he died in Newisham anyway. Then Alexander Farrant married in Plaxtall. He married Elizabeth Latter. Then you've got Edward. We've got, yeah, I found their grave. I found the grave of Edward. Isn't that amazing? And there's hook, hooks. So I'm going back in there just to look at the hooks. Lots of big gaps, but this is me actually wandering back to the graveyard to look for some hooks. There were some in there, but I never actually found them again. Anyway, wait, what happens is, I realise we've got hooks, smashbirds, farrants. somebody else I've already forgotten. <laughs> My memory is so bad. Then it's, that's it. So it was Edward Bashford and Margaret Hook was her maiden name. But of course I'm not going to record every Bennett I see. Cause that's further back in time. That's um... Yes, we actually I've actually found um Ollie's grandmother's grandmother. Which is good, isn't it? So if it's her grandmother, it's her mother's great grandmother, so it's Ollie's times two great grandparents I found. There was another name, I can't think of it now, but if I see it, it'll, it'll remind me. 